What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Supergirl Season 4, Episode 19, American Dreamer. Oh, just when I thought Supergirl was actually getting good, they said, hold up, wait a minute, let me put more crap back into it. I, I don't even, I, I'm too tired and exhausted and I'm not even going to try to do the lyrics or the rhythm or the beat or the melody right, because let's be honest guys. This show just went right back into the crap. Right back into it. After at least half a season of trying to actually put together good script writing and good character development and good storytelling with compelling sides. And they had a moral, yeah, but they were showing both sides of it. They were showing both extremes. All gone. All gone. We are back to liberal propaganda, baby. We are back to that good old, everybody is so important and all lives matter, but mainly the minorities because that's who we care about the most. And also, if you are judging people because they're different, you're wrong. Because it's hard to be different, even though the society as a whole is more welcoming to them than ever these days. It's so hard to be different, guys. Stop judging people for being different. Stop. You're evil if you do. You're evil. I know it's only like a few hundred of you out there in a country of a hundred million, but you're evil. We're going to talk to you because if you watch our show, clearly you need to know that you're evil. I just, God. Oh, man. I thought the heavy-handedness, the slapping over the head with the, the liberal agenda was... I thought it was gone. I thought it was done. I was like, maybe they're actually focused on telling a good story for once. Nope. Ben Lockwood, back to the same one-note villain he was near the beginning of the season. You know, that's, that's I think, the biggest injustice in all of this. Is that they actually had a pretty good, compelling character with Ben Lockwood. And I even said, he seemed like maybe he wouldn't necessarily be a good guy, but maybe he would start to be questioning what's going on. Because he didn't want to just be a pawn. He didn't want to just be used for somebody else. Like, he wanted he wanted to be recognized, and he wanted to be seen because he had something to say. He had been hurt in the past. He had been dealt a bad hand, and he blamed the aliens for it, and he wanted to deal with that. And that was a compelling thing. But once, once people started using him, once he realized people didn't really care about his message, it was more about just making themselves look good, that's when he started to feel like, hang on, this isn't right. And so whenever it looks like maybe he's just a pawn in somebody else's scheme, I'm thinking, well, maybe he'll check. Nope. Get to this episode, and what is he? He's basically just a shot caller. He's basically just an underdog, work or not an underdog, uh, a lap dog, working for the president, working for Lex. He doesn't care that he's prob that he's being used by somebody else. He's just like, oh, well, you know, now we can just attack the aliens and just do whatever we want to him. Yeah, that's what I wanted all along. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to be the one-note villain that these writers made me out to be. It's it's disappointing. Because they actually had something compelling with him. They actually had a good... A good villain for him. And now they're just... Ah, screw it. You know what? We were being a little too fair. We were being a little too fair to somebody that is, thinks differently than how we do. We should make him look more evil again. People might actually start to feel bad for him if we make him too compelling. If we make him too much of a human just dealing with normal human problems. Let's let's make him evil again, guys. Let's make him gung-ho again. And, you know, his wife gets killed at this. Honestly, I would be more intrigued to see what that's going to do for him if they hadn't turned him straight evil again in this episode. If they hadn't made him the one-note villain again in this episode. So now his wife's dead. I'm sure he's just going to turn psychotic. He's going to go out there and go on a killing spree of anything alien. And that's not an interesting villain anymore. That's just a psychopath. And that's not that interesting. And I just, I hate the fact that they did that. And then on to other crap. The whole thing about interviewing Nia and that whole bit, like her entire interview. Good God. Like, I've never seen anything so pandering before in my entire life. Like, oh, I'm just like you. I'm an American. I was born here. I have an alien father, an American, or 
Amer- alien mother and American father. I was born and raised here. I'm also a trans woman, and that's scary for me. But hey, I'm just like you guys, so don't hate on people that are... Di- <sighs> Can we stop, please? <laughs> Could this show stop taking these breaks from the plot to just push this agenda? I mean, there there are subtle ways to do this, guys. There are subtle, clever ways to handle the morals that you want to try to preach. And this is not it. <laughs> Literally putting up a random interview. And what's this going to do, anyway? And even in the, the, contents, uh, the context of the plot, what's this going to do? Hmm, let's see. Well, the people that are maybe on the fence that aren't in power, maybe their minds will be changed. But let's see, the people that are in power that are very one-note right now and just have very, very convinced mindset that all aliens are evil. Hmm. I wonder if this will change their minds. Hmm. I wonder if the writers actually decided to put a human conscience in these evil people. Probably not, if I had to take a guess. It just seems like a waste of time. It seems like it's more of a chance for them to just say, you know what? We've been representing a lot of people. Let's have a chance to represent the transgender people out there. Yeah, all hundred of you. We're gonna we're gonna represent. You know? Let's do it. Hey, get up there. Talk about all the things you like to show that you're just like everybody else. Represent you. We represent you, yeah. Yeah, we know what it's like to be you because we're not you. We we're probably just n- normal average white guys that probably have never felt a homosexual feeling or even had thoughts of you know being a woman trapped in a man's we've we've not experienced anything that you but we represent you we know how that it is so we're just gonna we're gonna shove it into our show give us good ratings huh <sighs> I I'm actually curious in fact you know what this might take a minute but I'm curious because I talked about earlier this season the ratings, right? The ratings are what a lot of people in the TV industry care about. They, they want good ratings, they want good viewership. So IMDB this season actually been a pretty good season, but I talked about the fact that um, apparently it's not been getting the best of ratings for whatever reason. The early episodes were, even though they were terrible, but then as things got better, the ratings started to drop, which is weird. And then, let's see here. Okay, never mind. My idea was shot. I just had a thought that maybe this episode got great ratings because of that whole agenda push, but never mind. It's just about as average as everything else this season. Um... Never mind. Sorry I wasted your time with that. I was just curious. Um, but yeah, just back to that old boring agenda push instead of trying to tell a compelling narrative, and it's frustrating. On top of all of this, we're also back to the dumb story, like stupid character decisions again. So James, he's going through his little thing, and then they get to the point, oh, I still have a migraine from how hard I slapped my head. So... Yeah, let me get this straight. You've got two kids that are apparently little psychopaths because on the day of his father's funeral, they decide to take this kid and shove him into a casket. From the same writers that whenever Carr and Alex, they they had that little flashback when they were in high school and that one kid died. He was probably murdered. And the kids were sitting there laughing and making jokes about the fact that he was murdered. These same writers now think that kids apparently lock other kids in caskets on the same day as their father's funerals. These writers don't have kids, do they? Please tell me they don't have kids. If they do, I'm scared to see what those kids are. If they really think this is how kids are. And then on top of that... Jimmy lied about this. He lied about the fact 
that these kids, these bullies, stuck him in a casket. Again, great writing, guys. This is clearly how bullies are. But he lied about it. Again, kids don't lie if it's not their fault. They lie if they did something bad. They lie if they think they're going to get in trouble. How is this his fault? It's not. These kids locked him in a casket. How does this make any sense? I mean, really. When have you ever seen a kid who got bullied, who got shoved into whatever? Like, if it's not their fault, why would they lie and say, yeah, I was just, I was in the diner, it was all my... He actually lied and made it seem like it was his fault. Like, he just didn't show up. Like, 7.2? Most of the season has been mid-7 range, and this is like lower 7 range, but still higher than some of the other episodes that were a bit better than this. I mean, this, this was crap. Between the huge liberal agenda push, between turning your complex villain back into a one-note evil, uh, I'm just, I just hate to hate, that's my whole thing, is just hating on things and wanting them dead, that, and then this stupid story, where these bullies act like, not bullies at all, they act like psychopaths, because no kid acts like this, and then on top of that, this whole thing is born from something that's so unrealistic as a kid lying about why he didn't show up to his dad's funeral when it wasn't even his fault. When it's these other kids that locked him in a casket, which by the way, how did nobody else see this? How did nobody else, like, did he just stay there until eventually the bullies let him back out? Did he eventually find a way? No, somebody had to have let him out somehow. Like, this... That was dumb. That was so dumb. Oh, my God. So, yeah, this show, back to giving me a migraine again. And it's really disappointing. Because, my God... The Flash ended on really satisfying note. Arrow, eh, little little iffy, but overall still enjoyed the season. And now we're getting to Supergirl, and it's like, this season's been actually probably one of the better ones this, this season. Like, right now, a after seeing the end of The Flash and Arrow, so far this season, it's been like, The Flash is here, Arrow and Supergirl are kind of here battling it out, and then Legends is down here, which is really disappointing for me. But now it's become the Flash is here, Arrow's dropped off a little bit more, and now Supergirl just pfft, right down with it, with Legends again. And I, again, what am I saying? Legends has never been this low. But, God. Alright, I've ranted enough about this episode. On to the next one. See you there. Now episode 20, will the real Miss Tess Makaru please stand up? Looks like I'm gonna have to go back to calling it Soap Opera Girl again. Great. So yeah, um, let's talk about it. So, the stuff with finding out Lex's plan, I mean, we pretty much already knew it, so it was just, it's Lena and Kara finding out about his plan. So, yeah, I don't know, it just figuring out the stuff that the audience already knew, but it's them figuring out, so it's like, okay, well, at least now they know, and they can try to figure it out. But then Kara does the stupid thing of going straight to the president, when clearly he's probably already in on it, or else he would not have gone as far along with all of this as he would have. I mean, he, he pretty much proved at the end, like, he's evil. And I, I don't understand when it happened, I don't know how it happened, but I hope they show us why, because when he started off, he seemed okay, and now all of a sudden he's evil. So, unless he was lying at the beginning, or unless somehow Lex got to him, but... Yeah, whatever the case, um, that's all that story was. You know, Eve Tessmacher was kind of there guarding the base, which I kind of wonder why she was there to begin with. Unless Lex just sort of put a clone of her there that had the ability to clone herself. Just as kind of like a, a defense mechanism type of thing. I don't know. I mean, I do... I will say that's probably the one good thing out of this episode 
seeing Eve be kind of a diabolical villain type, she's a funny character. Um, so I actually did kind of have fun with that a little bit. Problem is I couldn't have too much fun because anytime things started to get interesting, um, pause, Alex, what's going on with Alex? Uh, but then talking about Lockwood again, still just very one note. In fact, so much so to where he didn't even go to the funeral because he was so caught up in trying to search for the alien that killed his wife, even though he kind of caused it by locking up her husband. So if he hadn't done that, then she wouldn't have gone and attacked and killed his wife. So he's at fault. But of course, in his one note mind that the writers have given him, he doesn't see it that way. He's just like, no, no, she's guilty. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm the best. They're the worst. They're evil. Because that's what he's shown clearly to be all season, right? <sighs> It's just, it's funny to me whenever, he, like, these characters go from complex villains where he has a backstory that makes him relatable, and you can see that he's more afraid of the aliens, but now it's just, no, aliens are evil. Are they, though? Like, you didn't seem to, you obviously wanted to push the aliens out. Like, that's been his thing, but now that he's got the power, it's like, you would think... He would kind of be like, well, now that I've got the power, you know, now I have more power than most aliens out there. But now he's just, he's still acting like the same old, same old, just, I don't know. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's, maybe they're going to give him a change of heart by the end of it. Maybe he's going to see what he's become. Still don't know. I don't know. I, I should stop hoping for anything good because this show has already proven even when it does do stuff good very quickly it can turn back to crap again. Um, and again, pause for Alex stuff. Oh, what's gonna go on? What's gonna go on? Alex. I wanna know about Alex. Pause. Don't talk about the main story anymore, Mason. Why are you talking about the main story? Why are you not talking about Alex? And then um, we see, you know, Brainy trying to help out at the DEO. I'm still not entirely sure what his goal was. Like, I, I figured he would more stand up to Lockwood. He just kind of... Tried to get in his way a couple times, but not really? I don't know. He, I'm not really sure what his plan was, but he didn't really seem to be very effective. Um, and of course, you know, Haley is at... She's trying to get Lockwood's clearance revoked, but of course, since the president is evil, that's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, so because everybody was gone except for Brainy, he had to be the one to kind of step up to Lockwood. I feel like he just didn't do anything. He just, he warned him against using the serum. He kind of said no a couple times. I did think it was funny. He was like, what you're doing is unconstitutional. And he turned to everybody else. He's like, don't follow orders. Follow your heart. I'm like, I mean, or they could just follow the law. The, the Constitution doesn't have anything to do with your heart. Like, if he gives an order that's breaking the Constitution, then just, it should be follow the law. Because then you wouldn't be... What? How did how did your heart get involved in this? What does that have to do with anything? Um, it just seemed like a s silly line to me. But yeah, that's about all he really did in this episode, though. Like he didn't really do much else. And then Jimmy and Nia showed up at the end um, to fight Lockwood, and the Martian Manhunter showed up at the end to fight Lockwood. Yeah, so that's pretty much all that happened there. <sighs> And then, um, before I talk about the most important thing in this episode, to the to the writers at least, yeah, we'll also talk about um, Lena and how Disney Channel this ending felt. I'm going to tell her. I've decided I'm going to tell her the truth. God, I can't believe he lied to me. I swear, if anybody ever lies to me again, if I find out any of my close personal friends have ever lied to me, I just, I don't think I can live with myself. I, I don't think I could ever trust anyone ever again. I think it would completely change the foundation. Like, let's just say, for instance, Kara, that you were lying to me. I don't think we could ever be friends again. I don't think I could ever talk to you again. I think you would completely just, you would be off. I would never, I, I would try to kill you more than likely. Like, I would just be so pissed. I found out you were lying to me about something. So anyways, what did you want to tell me? Like, <laughs> what, did you rip some writers from, like, some stupid Disney Channel show now? 
Like, oh, you know, those Disney Channel shows, they're really doing well with the kids, aren't they? Let's get them up here and write for Supergirl for a show that should be appealing more to adults. Like, that's... yeah. That's smart. Like, as soon as she was about to tell her, I'm thinking, okay, so now go ahead and talk about how lying is awful, right? Even though she still does, constantly. I, I meant to say this in the last episode, but I was so pissed about everything else. She is very quick to pull out the victim card. So, so quick. Like, huh, you just don't like me because I'm a Luther. Luther card. Sounds like some other, you know, people that might be, you know, pulling out certain cards. Because they feel like they can. Anyways, um, so yeah, just stupid there. But yeah, let's talk about Alex. And their whole story and how it took up probably, I think, almost half the episode. Soap opera girl, guys, it's back! Because we care so much about Alex becoming a mother that it's not even reared its head until now. I think they talked about it once, uh, like one other time this season, but other than that, not been a thing. And all of a sudden this one episode, oh, she's getting a call from the adoption agency, guys. Oh, she could be a mother. Oh my gosh, she's going to be a mother. And then the mother didn't want to give the baby up, so Alex isn't going to even be a mother. Uh. You wasted my time. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I... As soon as they started talking about it, I'm like, oh great, here comes this story. And then they kept cutting back to it in the midst of things that were, I mean, not necessarily exciting, but at least a little bit more action-packed. Like, action stuff was going on. Action, action, action. They're in Cosnia. The base is about to explode. Cut! Alex, tell me how you're feeling. Shh! Stop the explosions. We need to focus on Alex. Like, what? Why did that get so much focus and then it didn't even pan out to anything? The mother decided to keep the baby. That cliche, which I've seen done pretty much any time that somebody wanted to adopt a baby in a TV show. Like, they do it at least once. If somebody's talking about adopting, they're like, Ooh, I could, I could be a parent. We found a, we found a mother willing to give up their kid. They, they're going to keep the kid? Okay. Happened so many times. What a cliche. So yeah, spend all that time, oh my god, and then on top of that, just to randomly throw in, because in this show, gay people are not the minority, guys, they're the majority. I, I love the fact that they talk about how hard it is, and I swear every other person on the show is gay. Like, all of a sudden we find out, apparently, Jimmy's sister, like, she talked about how she was engaged, and I'm like, oh, let me guess, she's gay. Oh, it was with my sergeant. Oh, okay, that actually makes it... She didn't want to do... Oh, she, huh? <laughs> what a coincidence. Everybody's gay! Oh, my God. Just that entire story seemed like such a waste of time. What was the point? To represent? <sighs> oh... I think it makes me more upset because I did have hope. Like, I did feel like I was enjoying the show. They, they got me on top. They, they got me on its side. They got me feeling like, you know what? They have their liberal agenda that they like to beat over your head, but they've actually told a pretty good story this season. They've actually kept the focus what it should be on. They've done a good job telling this story. And then... These two episodes. Back to the same old Supergirl that I'm used to. Back to the same old crap. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, it's not like this season has been completely devoid of crap. Like I said, the first few episodes were awful. And even when they got better, there was still a lot that I still didn't enjoy. I mean, the story with John seemed weird. Seemed out of place. But the rest of it seemed interesting. But you know what the main problem has been? What kind of sparked this? Where's Lex? I mean, don't get me wrong. Eve has been a pretty enjoyable side villain. 
and working for Lex. But ever since the one episode where we saw his plan, I don't think we've seen him. And it started going downhill. Almost like maybe they should have kept him the main like focus. Like followed his plan, followed what he was doing as well while our heroes. Maybe they could spend a little bit more time on that instead of focusing on Alex and her baby situation. Nia and her trying to you know, raise awareness for being transgender and all this stuff. Like, maybe if they kept the focus where it should be, like they were doing earlier, maybe it would be good again. But no, that's too, it's too difficult to write a, a good, compelling story for a whole season. We're just going to write a few good episodes. Uh, this has definitely been the longest, ever since I started doing these two episode reviews to, like, end out the season... This has for sure been the longest one. What, 26 minutes now? Oh my god. I gotta watch the last two episodes. Ugh. But yeah, I think that's about it. Can't think of anything else. Yeah, I think that's it. So, with that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts? Let me know what we can talk about, discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for a future Supergirl. I don't want to do this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.